Starts with C. Same formation. If you dance, <laughs> if you dance right through, so the uh, the end uh, just starts the opposite of the end, then none existed line. Then the air of the just reflected on the. You get the that. So what you mean to do is dance to go down the arm. I think going down the arm is better. It is, but this is just no variation. And if you've got a big set, then quite visually, visually the, the set is reflecting as a mirror from the mirror. Uh, one of the mirrors, isn't it? Right. Now, in the same formation, will you face your partner? Now, what we've got to imagine is that the odds are the outside, the evens are the middles, right? And the constant Billy Country Gardens type dance is where you evens off your stick up and the odds hit. The stick. <laughs>
W-E-M-O-N-T. Uh, the place in the uh, I don't know, what time's time? One. That's all. One. Okay, then, fine. Well, we're uh, sorry, uh, whoever town is, he said one o'clock. Yeah. Aiming towards one. Big one with the voltage. Right. Okay. Somewhere. 25 feet. So we've got about four dancers in there. Not if you put nine to two things in This one. team here have actually discovered they think they can do curly headed playboy in that formation. <laughs> I wish to dissociate myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did actually suggest from the stage that there's a competition to think in that formation how to do curly headed playboy, and the prize is a free funeral. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's too dangerous for us. Right. Um, Within that formation, it's also possible to do simple things like the equivalent of um, bobbing a rain. You just pass and get on with it. Rain, in effect, the track of the half hay, and then you do a half hay and so on, you just carry all the way around. Because when you've done a course twice through, you get back to where you were. Right. Now, for the next one, I want sets of four. Sets of four. Um, and the once this up is all facing out. So we get in your groups of four, and it's William Stick and Nancy. Stick. No, we ain't with handkerchiefs, oh. sorry. No, you did say. When, when we get to the yeah. uh, slug, he's on the four, we might have to go in there. No, no, no. I'm budding. No, 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 no. no. The am not sure
But the problem is, of course, you're facing the wrong way. So everybody turn to their left, pass right shoulders in the middle, and hook or gather. Facing out, so you're on the other diagonal. And you do the second half, number one. D
10 minutes ish to lunch. Alright, one more dance. Get yourself a stick. <laughs> Young Collins is next. Right. <laughs> <laughs> da 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 da, I'm pumping.
So can I get this side of the hall? Get it while this side rocks. You can spread it up No complaints about the music being fast. <laughs>
the South Americans are always dancing with my wife. What's your name? Mustafa. Oh. <laughs> you must have a double.
Now, this revival was the people, in fact, that Sharp uh, saw. Now, Tiddy, who was Sharp's, uh, you know, friend, one, of Sharp, friend, one of Sharp's friends, lived in Aspen at this time. And while he was there, they got a class going with the kids at the school. And before and after the First World War, there was an acid under which would basically chill the sun, both boys and girls, with the Morris. And that's important because it's from people of those uh, two groups, which in fact details of the Morris have been collected. Now when, um, the one I mostly consulted was a man called Ralph Pennybone, who had been Tiddy's Batman during the war, um, became a Oh, I forgot what they're called. He went up to Oxford University um, as, a, as a working class, what were they called? Not in the English school, something else. Well, no. um, he went, went up there, there, he got a degree, and took in um, to becoming a teacher. And he actually married a woman who'd been the pianist for Sharp in many of his sort of lectures and uh, workshops in the sort of South Midlands uh, before or during the war and uh, they settled down in Evesham and he was a school teacher in Evesham from sort of mid twenties onwards. He was a very fine dancer when young and for a while was also a member of the headquarters uh, of Morris side and he after the war with most of the old most of the key dancers of Kennedy's generation in the field. They had former side by the time the next lot. You remember that for us. He always went to the Charlton um, Festival, uh, the EFDSS Festival, and so on. And he was in the display team. And he got involved in a number of things like the visit to Roma Cotswolds in the late 20s to meet all the old guys and see whether Mr. Sharp's not actually correct or not. You know, um, that sort of thing. And he had a lot, he's had to be a lot to say to people at the time and so on. But what he said was is that the old dancers used to come around watching at practice and all they do is shake their heads and say, that's not Morris. <laughs> uh, they actually taught them the jigs and Ralph Honeybone could actually dance drop into the fair and actually have a notation of certain jigs. The notation turned out to be exactly the same as those in Sharp's manuscript. And it's very likely that what happened is that, as elsewhere, that Sharp Having collected dances and laid the people he got it from to make a copy of the notations, which they then gave to other people. You know, because the traditional dancer didn't have a written notation suitable for writing works. And so on. And that's what, so I mean, it's maybe a bit incestuous, uh, this sort of thing. But the problem was that Sharp, in noting from the, the two older brothers, didn't actually say anything about the arm movements. This is was a problem. We've got some figures, but, uh, but it's the these youngsters, particularly a man called Tainter, who was a, a, a gay male dancer we met, who um, was still quite active at the time I met him. And then he fell out an apple tree and killed himself, um, which wasn't very helpful. Um, these people were quite clear about how the hand was going because they had been taught by the old dancers. So we do actually have as it were, a dual source of information. Now, there is no other ASCII information we're ever going to get. You know, this is the problem. You, know, you have to make do with what we've got. Some of it was like the, the woman at the post office was at Edwards, you know, who also had learned to do as a schoolgirl, had learned to do jigs. You know, and um, she was incredibly fat. And uh, she used to dance in the passageway, couldn't dance the shop and the wooden floor wasn't very tough. You know, the whole shop was still around. She used to dance and she used to brace herself on the two walls of the passage like that, you know, and then she can actually dance. Quite fascinating. You didn't get much in the way of arm of But it's from these people. Now what we also realised after a while, when it sort of sat, several sat together and said, well, what the hell are we seeing compared to what was collected? We realised, because they also carried our way, in effect, an EFDSS inspired class that all had learned Headington as their basic division. Now, I'd already met that in, um, in Leafield, because uh, Europe, Russ and I went one night, um, 
and we arranged for several of those announcers to meet us. You know, and we played a few tunes and just sang a bit because this was a, a singing pub in those days. And then Chap went over to the piano and started playing Morris tunes with his piano. And it was an eight tune piano, so it was quite interesting. <laughs> but, um, and then Six got up and started doing dances. See? I was sat aghast. We didn't recognise. What we saw was nothing like we'd ever seen before. You see? And at this stage, we began to wonder, they said, well, you know, what, what is it? You know, is this the tradition of survival? The perhaps field day isn't quite the way it was reputed to be and so on. Then it had been said. Uh, um, and then we suddenly realised what we were seeing was people who had learnt in 1920, you know, and by 1962, you know, that year, their head intern had actually drifted. <laughs> yeah, they didn't give it a regular pack, they just went up and did it. And what we were seeing was, in fact, some incredibly badly remembered head intern marks. But it was fascinating in its own way. Um, they didn't learn any of the field tone because the old dancers, of which they knew the major of quite a few of them, uh, just refused to have anything to do with them. Uh, just, there was no sort of contact between these kids and some of the old dancers and the them. It asked us a bit more there. Tiddy was in the village, Tiddy had a, a boy's side. Tiddy got people like Miss Sinclair to come along. Tiddy had gone out with Butterworth to collect it at um, Bladenton. Then they brought back and taught the boys head to the dance. So we missed up, there were Tiddy's boys actually doing Bennington. She'd come to teach them Bennington, um, she watched them, so she knew it off of them. The other way they got it in a much more direct way. And that's important to know that because Tiddy's Bennington was the one that Sharp published with the shuffles and the galleries and the non things not, which are not the way we do Bennington anymore. Right? Because what we do is the Bennington of the young. Leddington side, who had a marked change in style between that and the old, the older man, Mike Wright, who uh, were collected from my two and so on. But it's been a complicated mix. And I say, the more you unpeel particularly what we know, the less certain we are about what things are. And the, the less I worry about the fact we have to cobble things together to actually make dances. Now, one of the Lost Brothers was invited up to London by Mary Neal. And although there's no record in having taught, uh, was there no record in Clive Carey's paper, there's no reference of Asker actually being taught as dancers, there were in the document called uh, Miss Neal's Notes on the Morris uh, references to all the traditions, uh, Cotswold and elsewhere, people who came up to London to teach. Which includes, I'm I think, the Brooks, the um, Godly Hill Man. I don't know. We've got a No. No, you don't know. All right. Well, Godly Hill was taught to the uh, Esperance Club, so, you know, uh, girls doing Northwest Morris goes all the way back to 1908. Uh, um, Flamborough came up, uh, Rapperside came up, as well as all sorts of cops or people. Um, Yard of the <coughs> came up. They met the man at Maudsley and so on. They had a lot of contact. 30 different places that did traditional arts came back to support the Mary Lee. So there the was so the, these various sources. And one of the other Ascot, there were some odd comments about how the Ascot dancers were done. You know? um, these not quite matching what Sharp noted. And we'll come back to that. You know, if that's a small influence, at least on the way we started to arrive. Well, the first thing we've to do is that the uh, basic anti the basic step is a classic uh, Cotswold double step, right? With the, right? And then we have a cross back step, right? The rather exaggerated, <laughs> noted is a sort of rather bit more cross backy than Headington, you know, it's a bit more exaggerated than the way they used to do Headington, that's the way Headington does it today. Right, step in the middle. So if you line your way up by out um, the sets, we'll do a once just sample a foot up and a foot in foot up is six bars of stepping on the spot facing up, cross back, ending with a jump to face across. We're going to dance boys to the bunch I hope. 
Bouncy store bus just left. No, I did, if I did say that, which I don't remember saying, I was completely and utterly wrong. And I'm sorry I missed it.
have known me for a long time, and I am obsessed against the stupid side who will do a dip and up hand movement, which is, doesn't occur in any of the old traditions, but it's very common in modern traditions. Right, yeah, modern traditions. There are no downward into the brain movements in Cox or Morris, they're all up. Right? If you're going to do this, you're a board of Morris, that's it. <laughs> right, so it's up, arm up straight, and it's by your ear, it says in the manuscript, by your ear. So it's possible that you can't actually get your arm straight enough. So I ask you to lean your head over. <laughs> right, good. Flip with the wrist. Right, and halfway. Let's do that to music. We'll have an A and Not to keep it. Right, I <laughs> could.
limitations to actually have all the dust there, to actually get all that sort of thing solved. But it will change their way of doing the arm movements, right? That's the sort of question. Now, one of the things that Mary Neal's thing said was about the galley, the organ thing that's not just in the heart gym. Stylistically, there's something weird about having that, that galley halfway through the heart gym only. You know, and a sensible thing if you were doing that, reviving it from sharp, you wouldn't do that. You just have to cross back to regardless. Uh, all the way through, but it's still a different contention, but so far. But she actually, you know, said something about that. Now, what I hadn't realised again until recently, the notice one today, the wording of her, her note for this document is a little ambiguous. I always interpreted it as meaning to get the galley for the first half, and not the second, right? You go quite the first figure. But it could have been interpreted as actually having a galley in both halves. Right? Now that's quite interesting. So what I want to do now is that we're actually going to do the same dance, but each half of those intermediate figures, each half ends with a galley. Right? You'll find it's actually quite interesting to do. Right? So up we get, we'll do the same dance but to a different tune. Will you play Brighton Camp? Half gift, hold gift back to back. You start on the left foot. There's a whole team who believes that you only carry on the left foot.
uncertainty about how the GAN fitted in. And there's no doubt that the GAN required a problem of producing a problem of balance and the difficulty when you come to stick dances and so on and so on. And therefore, during the revival of asset, different sides have to find their own solution to these. Like, they don't bother to go with the stick downs and things of that sort. Still, as a result of, uh, of finding it, the, the first bit of revival was in fact somewhere about 1968, 69, we were, I was teaching this at Horsley Manor, which we written there. And you had a lot of fun doing this and didn't take it very seriously. And he wrote the time showing you that he said, I was about three months afterwards I suddenly realised that I actually been ex he'd been exposed to something very sellable in the day when he was doing festival and workshop and that show. And he couldn't quite remember what he'd done. So he said he wrote down as best he could and went and taught that. Yeah. Now he taught at the Helga first. Uh, and that's interesting. He then taught it the commentary differently. Right? And that's also interesting. About this time, with Bath City, I'd started, I had taught them one year, Duckington and Stanton, and finally Ascot. So there was already three versions running at this sort of stage. And that's the sense as far as I'm going to get off. Oh, also, Glory of the West End, Exeter, but also um, uh, picked up Ascot. I imagine it's from me. But I know by the time I got going to see them dancing, that was a fourth way of doing it. And of course, all these teams have set out down their own paths at that time to create their own dancing, because there was not enough of the tradition that can do it. Either borrow dancers from elsewhere or create them themselves. And this is what we're actually going to do. Um, during the rest of the session. But since then, I am aware of sides who also have danced Ascot, like Towsley. Uh, I know Bourne River got it from Coventry and so on. And every time it's been transferred, as it were, it changes. Different bunch of people dance differently. They make subtle changes or even major changes to suit themselves. So now it's actually a complex interweaving of interpretations. <coughs> the modern traditions, by that, the ones that have been revived, as it were, were in society for the last 30 years, have never been so definitive as the ones that Sharp published, for several reasons. One, Sharp published in a time when what Mr. Sharp said was right. And a lot of people didn't realise it could be interpreted other ways, or the raw data um, actually might be different to what we published. Right? So one of the things in the last 30 years is actually persuading people that manuscript and the tradition of people out there may actually have done it differently to the West Point Reserve. But the things like Asco, where I certainly never made any text about there being a right way, a proper way, I can talk about like this about the uncertainty, it's allowed people uh, of each side really to interpret this to suit themselves. And I hope that's washed into the other older traditions as well, so people actually are expressing themselves rather than trying to preserve something to their own museum. Right. Now what I want to do now is I suppose a Bath City version of that dance. Now what we did it fast, but we kept the smallish circles in the uh, back step, sorry, the cross step, right? There are other ways of doing it, and we'll come to those uh, that way. Um, but the side step movement was actually done facing up, right? Face towards the music to do the, to, and of course, it allowed you to do open side step, move across, open side step, move back. Right, let's get you in your set facing up this coffee break or tea break and keep the out of this stuff. Is there a good one? Yeah, Highland Mary is a good one, which I've just said. That's the bath chip. I guess it is.
We're going to do, oh, we're going to do the galleys in the, in the halfway point, but not the end. All right. All right. We're going to do what I was called to sort of orthodox dominant. <laughs> the way I used to believe it was done. When you used to believe it. Yes. Now I'm not so sure. So you're on all I've made up my mind, I don't know. Now, we face up, we're all going to do a sidestep to our left. Open signs that da la da and down and up and ta 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 and down and up. Half pay done smartly and facing across. And then we face up to the next bit again. Now the problem having facing up is that what way do the middles go while well, the middles go up both times, please? So you ends have to think a little bit about what you are doing, so it depends where you are on how you do it. The other tradition, the, the Ripon tradition, makes the hay field town like with people banging up and down along the set, and we'll come to that in a minute. Right? Music, wherever the music is. Yeah, hold up, sir.
showed them Cobra and said, all that's interesting, what they're doing? I said, that's good. And I showed them Bath, I said, that's interesting, what they're doing? That's good. I showed them Bristol, what are they doing? That's good. So when I came to show them Florida, I said, I guess what it is! You know, just, it, they're all really different. Uh, so let's have a tea break and uh, we'll have a go at the other two.
came here B music, and what we do is a short side step each way, open side step, uh, two slow capers, um, and then what do we need to get across the other side? Of two bars of stepping and a cross back. So dance on the spot. I'll show you. In, in slows, there's B music with the slows. <laughs>
the good ideas are usually simple and not had by somebody else. The next one we're going to do is Valentine and our um, commentary as well. Now, this is a bit more, the same stepping as we've just done, but it's more like Gallantry's up. Right? So I was face across. You do your open side step to the right and left. Da, da, da. And then we're going to cross over, turning as you go so that you're facing your opposite on whatever it is. Stepping, carrying is all slows. Now when we get to the slows, you go back to where you were a moment. In doing the capers, I want you to end up at the end of the first set of four in one line up the middle. So you're going around face to face, you're crabbing sideways as it were. So as you go around, one, two, three, four. Now, one, two, three, four. You keep literally facing so that you're actually capering and moving sideways around the circle. If we go back here, one with the dark way. Half lay on the wrong side and then cross back. And cross back, I mean cross over, not cross back steps. I also mean cross back steps. Why did I get this? Having arm pitch for the south is stupid. Right, let's back to where you started. We will now actually try the whole of the Love Alentino. Once the swing the Swedish team, the women's Swedish team, the Valentino Valentino. So the first one was the kiss, the second one was a passion kiss, the third one was a very passionate one, and the fourth one we had rolling around on the floor. Play for the sheep, I was
still made it to fit in. You wonder why you have loads of doors. That's right. <laughs> but that's no need. That's right, you just need to do one of them. Yeah. You don't impress people by doubling the length of people. No, I think it probably comes at a habit of other, other dancers, you know, where it's natural to slow down a series of slow people. So it carries over. But I, I like that tune, you know, it's a nice one to dance to for that very reason. Yeah. Field chain leap frog chain. Yeah. When you said Ascot and Engine, I didn't immediately think of things like Field Chain. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was silly of me. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's, let's do trumpets. Let's do trumpets. Any um, There should be a field train trumpet. Yeah. Yeah. It's from Minster Lovell, isn't it? What we do for all both of them. Um, actually, Finstock, because North Lee do Finstock, um, Finstock so that's tomorrow, and North Lee's easy. It's a tomorrow position. So, yeah, well, it's going to be good. Village 
long it was. Now, I think the Mike Healy study, published study, shows that the, all the teams in which were there were linked in the sense that when a foreman changed, the team became known by the place that was in the Finstock rounds and the field and so on, field assets and so on. So there was a sort of uh, vagueness about the territory. And certainly at least the level of the, uh, there was a, a trunk also. Uh, this is different. It's the one that's described under field tens of the book and the way the course goes. Now the subtlety that commentary has done is that they had the corners all crossing after each other rather than separately, you know, they went through each other. And that's how nice. Now I taught that to Gloria for West, who then proceeded to do it as Ascot does. Right? And I thought that looks very good, so I teach it in the, in this Ascot form to people rather than in the other sort of form. That's what we're trying to do, right? So sets of six. <laughs>
Sundance has no way to go. We're winning this election. Now, I'm not going to go.
Balance yourself again. Uh, if I can show you a bit. Not slowly this time.
job doing the yoga drill is that all you can do. Um, very nice person. It was, he was keen on international dancing. Um, he wasn't necessarily ready for core work, but I would be going and playing my accordion for him, and quite a few of the local musicians would go with him. He's rather fun. And uh, it was actually we paying for him tireless and ready when we met the woman we came to know as Mrs. Heppel uh, and got information about what turned out to be the uh, Cheshire Morris at Northwich, although she explained about coming from being born and brought up in Marston, so we made the mistake of believing she was from Marston. It's only when we actually compared the pictures of the Marston Morris, which in fact was a mixed side with her pictures, which were at girl side, and realised they actually weren't the same. Uh, and the dance wasn't the same either, so I mean, that's the right for them. So, John, his side decided they wanted something different. So he came over one evening by an age and we talked about him, and he decided he wanted to do Alaska. So in our living room, we actually went away to the dance and wrote some notes. And then it was another year when I saw the song, you know, and between leaving my house and getting to the practice hall, there were significant deviations occurred in the dancers. When um, I filmed them a few years later, they were the only side I'd met who could do a dance with both feet on the grain more or less all the way through. <laughs> you know, um, I had gone on a very weary moment. <laughs> but still, now what? What have they done? What we're going to do anyhow is um, the boys of the bunch, wherever she's gone. <laughs> now, this is interesting, you see, because first of all, it shows that. The first thing you've got to remember, there aren't any cross backs. They're just simple, plain back steps. The back to what I would consider ordinary back sets, really. The second thing is that you clearly confuse the choruses because the chorus of this dance is not quite like any other one. So if you make out your sets of six, I'm walking through. <laughs> This I might say is how dances are created. New ideas appear and so on. So, uh, <laughs> same yeah. Yeah. But you face across. <laughs> side step, open side step left, facing up and you turn to your left. To your right. And then we do our half pay now. Off we go. One, two, three, and one, two, three, and back step. And of course we've got four bar, you know, four big steps over, so we face and do four plain capers. One, two, three, four. Side step left. Side step left. Side step right. Part A. And cable. We go to music, please. An A and two Bs. A once to start with two Bs.
So Hugh Ribbon decided he played the tune in jig time that regular macarena so he did. And all of a sudden they came as I am, but the you know, that sort of thing. And it took off from that point of view. Now, I, other people have explanation of the origin. Christ, I was there, I saw it. <laughs> you know, evolved. So it's balanced the sort of score. Um, you know, grew egg mask, really. Banks of the Deep is a, you know, like the Field 10 one. That was a sort of mention of the song. But they Bristol do um, Nightingale. You know, standing hard or pipe dance and sticks. Um, Coventry do a constant Billy, you know, field ten Billy and that sort of style. Um, and they all seem to do a black joke. And none of them likes the black joke that's published, I might say. So you'll find endless variety, particularly <coughs> the number of people who do black joke as if it's the Bleddington black joke. You know, which is another fairly modern creative one, you know, where you hit along the line and so on, rather than the one that's actually written down in the book. But you see, the problem when you start adding in extra beats for sticking and so on, what do you do with the galley halfway, you know, all that sort of thing? Um, and it, it has provided a different result. And the usual the result is that people have to change the dance to make it danceable. Um, you know, I mean, I don't agree with that at all, I mean, that's the way I do it. Um, Coventry do a shepherd say hand clapping whole, a whole set dance, and that probably, uh, that's in the traditional list anyhow, and that's a number of things in that sort. Um, yeah, I mentioned Bristol in that one. Um, yeah, Cup Hill was, you bet, Cup Hill's a bit more elementary on the whole and do it, but they actually have a, a young side, relatively young side now, uh, and the last year or two, the dancing was very good. And I did you know, I can recommend my friends to go and watch them. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> so, Bristol is developing Ask of the Bit, so there's a few more dancing hangings of that sort. Yeah. But nothing out of the ordinary, essentially, can be done really with an exciting Bristol one. Uh, Glory of the West have been creating dances, but I just have to say that. Uh, I couldn't find to look at the unedited silly film I took up from some years ago. I couldn't remember when it was, so I couldn't find it. So um, but I know they, they went through a period of years in uh, particular the stick and so on. So it's a very interesting tradition which has had threads, which I fortunate to see at the start of it and had start to sort of it. I've also seen over a number of years how the size of actually is it were taken to this and got to grips in different sort of ways, you know, reflecting really the character of the people who are leading the side, at least dominating the thinking of the way the science and action comes. Um, and about that many divisions, uh, uh, we can actually point to such a variety of such a sort of as I do. But uh, it does seem to come into the modern things that ask it stand and Duckington in particular seems to spawn lots and lots of ideas. It's a nice sort of dance. But then, there's a, what I call a case study. It's one of the few where I can actually grind you through it. And I haven't mentioned Tamar Zoo, and I haven't mentioned one or two of the other people who actually do that sit and do an interesting mix of the ideas that we've actually tried today. But it does seem the common elements are a long put up, cross backs, and half of the galley and half the figure. Right. Um, and from there on, it's a pretty guess of how it's going to turn out. Um, of the women's side, I know there's, oh, I'm trying to pronounce it, swimming. Really not me. Right? Uh, certainly, um, Ring of Bells in New York uh, are a very powerful side when it comes to doing that sort of So there are, yeah, there are women's sides who good science to do it well, I should say. So it's a spreading tradition. Not necessarily thick on the way. Right. Um, I reckon this is sort of uh, time, yes. I reckon it's time to actually say food here at seven. Right. You have your own kawaii to sit and talk, drink, <coughs> or just pass it. Right. Can I check one thing? Um, that's
beer drinkers, the Hobgoblin, the 6%, uh, are the evil stuff. We have about two pints left in one of the polypins, and I have another polypin. I don't particularly want to be left with it at the end of the weekend. If you think it's sensible, I could go and probably swap it for something more moderate. If you're going to get through 36 points of that tonight, then that's absolutely fine and we'll keep it. What do you want to do? Uh, enough. There's a full one there, and there are... I've got a full one back at the hostel, and there are two... Which are if you drink the whole drop in slowly, rather than knocking it back, you just keep drinking all night. As long as they do, that's fine, but I don't want to be left with sort of 20 points at that time. But I could swap it this evening if you want. Put up the number of hands that you're going to drink. Now, wait a minute. Put up your hand if you like to drink Hobgoblin this evening. I should swap it. No, now I'll just 